Solo queuing is one of the most annoying parts of any game, creating in most cases an awful experience for everybody involved. Now, we've all been there before, and avoid trying to queue alone in competitive modes, but sometimes we have to. Whether it's because your duo or trio is offline, or you have no friends at all. And well, I fell into that category. But now I have plenty of friends, just look at them all, see? They love me, right? Ask my friend Poe, you like me, right? What was that, Mom? I need to feed my plant? Point is, I solo queued for a long time. I started in Silver and made it to Ascendant just by solo queuing. And I learned a lot of things that I still implement into my games today. You see, there's a lot more to this game than clicking somebody's head faster than they can click yours, and it's very apparent when you're playing alone. The tips I'm going to be giving aren't specific to just solo queue. You should incorporate these things in any game you play. I've just found over my solo queue career that these simple things become a hundred times more important when playing alone. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Where are they brought I don't know anything about any numbers. When joining any game, there are some factors you should consider. The first thing you should do is understand the 20-20-60 rule, or the 20-60-20 rule, or the 60-20-20 rule. 20% 20 of the games you play, you will lose, no matter what, by factors completely outside of your control. Examples could be smurfs, teammates having a bad game, or people disconnecting. On the flip side of things, 20% of the games you play, you will win by factors outside of your control. Similar to the previous 20%, Sometimes you have a teammate who's just popping off, a smurf's on your team now for a change, or your enemies are AFK and throwing. These games you essentially get a free win and don't really have to do much. And last but certainly not least is the 60%. 60% of the games that you play, the outcome relies heavily on you. These are the close games and the games that you're directly impacting the outcome of the game. These are the games that you should be worrying about the most. The games that you can look back and reflect and improve on. If you do this, these are the games that will make you a better player in the long run. The purpose of this is to show how people can get way too caught up in blaming teammates for losses or complaining about the other team smurfing when the odds of the reverse happening is about the same. If you seriously want to get better at this game, you need to focus on the losses you have in the 60%. If you won, congrats. But if you lose, take accountability for what you did wrong and what you could have done better. Now I know what you're thinking. But all of my losses are out of my control and my teammates suck and blah, blah, blah. Which brings me to my next point. <laughs> Your thoughts. When you lose a game, it's always the same reason. My teammates suck. Solo queue is a coin flip. There's always a possibility that your teammates are gonna be having a bad game or maybe your team just isn't clicking. But at the end of the day, that's what solo queue is. So if you just blame your team or the game itself for its randomness, you're never going to get better. It is up to you guys to do what is necessary to win. If people are having a rough game, give them suggestions on what to do differently and tell them what to do maybe. Be the IGL that they need. I know they're a random person that you don't really care about, but there are so many things that you can do to help these guys out. And in the unfortunate circumstance that they're just tilted off the side of the earth and won't listen, well, there's nothing you can do, but at least you tried. That may be one of the unfortunate 20% of the games that you lose. Now you shouldn't have to babysit your team the whole game, but it can definitely help your team of randoms get on the same page just to execute basic attacks. As a controller main, I usually take it upon myself to call the strats for the team because then I automatically know where and when to smoke for my team. But regardless, communicating stuff like that makes a huge difference. Even there. Turn your fucking mic off. I wasn't even there. The bears, turn your mic off. Oh my god. Use your microphone. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and judge your financial situation, but if you have a gaming PC, you should probably be able to afford a microphone. I don't care if it's an Xbox Connect mic that picks up your mom vacuuming the house dogs barking in the background, and siblings fighting in the other room. Just use something, please. And what's even crazier is that some of you guys have great mics and just don't use them. It is insane. One of my favorite things in all of Valorant is when a teammate either starts talking after it's too late or when we lose and he calls me garbage. And to the ladies out there, I understand why you don't like speaking at all because guys say hateful, creepy crap to you the second they hear your voice. I don't have a solution for that, but you need to know that 
if you don't talk to your team, you are setting them up for failure. Typing in pings don't count either. And that goes for everybody because everybody needs immediate feedback to know what's happening around the map. I shouldn't have to read something and look for pings and what they may mean while I'm holding an angle. He's behind me. But for my people who do have mics, there is no such thing as talking too much, unless you're giving useless information. But telling the team what you're doing, when you're doing it, makes it so much easier for people to play off you. You have no idea. This is called action comms. Hey, I'm flashing this, alting that, I'm peeking in three, two, one. Stuff like this paired with creating a plan before the round starts will equate to more wins. Winning. Giant marquee name comes through on your caller ID and it's like, winning. Some are saying that you're bipolar. I'm by winning. A make or break moment in everyone's solo queue journey begins in the agent select menu. Here's what it should look like. What's up, team? I can feel. Hello, we hello. Love, we, lo we love to hear those words. <clears throat> the ass, brother. Um, do what we can get. I could do omen if someone could do chamber. I can run chamber or I can run chamber. I like double initiator. We'll initiate our yeah, double double initiate I, can, I can I can play chamber. Play chamber? Well fine. what can you run, brother? I like this. I like flat communicating. I'm a little nerdy boy. Nerdy boy. Okay, so he has smokes, uh magical. What would you be more comfortable with? Um You can answer you see... What are you what are you thinking? How are you feeling? Yeah. I'm not, I don't prefer I, I, I can Reyna. I can play Doobie, chamber Doobie, too. Doobie, can you raise? Okay. I think raise on bind is strong. I could do raise. Oh, if you could do raise, too. raise. Oh, dude. yeah, now nah, raise is really strong. Counters the thing. I mean, you dude, want me to sky? Is... I can disable their stuff. We're gonna need a KO. Yeah, you could do KO. Play. Uh, okay. Uh, cool, I don't cool. know. Who could do chamber? Fuck, I could do. Chamber. Uh, I can I just don't op. I can play chamber. Oh, you could play chamber. Yeah, sure. I can. I can. Okay, I'll go KO. This is looking sick, boys. This is looking good. Good communication right there. Like the most oh. conversation we I had in an age of selection. <laughs> Literally though. We won the agent select. By the way, this actually happened. Like no joke. This isn't a skit. This was a real solo queue game where I got a group of people who actually wanted to win the game. Crazy, right? That is how it should be. But instead, we usually get this. What's going on, guys? Oh my fucking god. Oh, oh my, my fucking god. Why do we have four dudes? You guys can't be serious. This doesn't make any sense. Why didn't you, you, you go smoke? So you guys literally, you're the last person to lock me on. So what the fuck's wrong with you? Are you actually brain dead? No, you're actually fucking brain dead. You actually fucking brain dead. Are you so now, I know every Tips and Tricks channel out there has videos saying what the best solo carry agents are, but picking solo carry agents is something you should not aim for. Now, I'm not saying that you should never pick these agents at all, but... I personally hate them because I'm sick of everybody insta-locking Jet and Reyna for the sake of solo carrying, or just because they're less team-oriented, meaning that you don't have to work with the team for the most part. This isn't always the case, but in my personal experience, these insta-locks go against everything I've already talked about. Certainly not least, do not lose your mental. The second that you do, it's over. In some cases, you may be able to pull yourself together, but usually that doesn't happen. So here are a few examples of things that can tilt you and tips on how to combat that. If your teammates are trash talking you or being annoying, just mute them. Doing this is the best possible option for still potentially winning the game. Be the better person and just cut the crap so that the rest of your team doesn't have to deal with it. Now. I know how annoying it is to deal with a little Timmy on your team who wants to win an online argument over a video game. But at the end of the day, nobody cares. So just mute them. Now another thing is that when teammates tell you to change something up because it isn't working, don't get offended. Don't get annoyed. They want to win the game just as much as you do. I hope. This is what it can look like in game. Hey, uh, do you, do you mind uh, stop dry peeking a bit? No. So something that most people don't know is that your inner voice telling you that you are not wrong is literally a defense mechanism in your brain telling you that you're always right. Your brain doesn't like thinking it's doing anything wrong. 
even though you might be. You need to acknowledge this. It is in times like these that you must examine how you react to this criticism. You can work through it and come out better than before, or you can hide behind your defenses and feel safe in the moment. But just know that this mindset will keep you stuck and unable to grow. Lastly, your performance in game can have a major impact on your mental. That is, if you let it. Here's what I mean. The only thing that Riot gives you to measure how good you are doing is the scoreboard. And on that scoreboard, there are only two things that most people look at. Kills and deaths. These stats do not, and I repeat, do not matter. Most people judge their performance off of KDA and nothing else. If you believe this to be true, you won't grow as a player. Because the scoreboard doesn't show you a lot of things. Things like util usage, comms, impact frags. And even if you struggle to find kills in a match, there are still ways you can be useful to your team with better util usage, good comms, and getting kills that actually matter. So don't let it get to your head if you don't have a lot of kills. Let me ask you this, what's more important? Getting kills at the end of an enemy eco round or getting the two opening picks on a buy round? They don't show that on the scoreboard now, do they? A lot of what solo queuing is, in my opinion, is your mentality. No matter how good you are mechanically at the game, solo queue proves to be the ultimate test of your mental fortitude, which I think is kind of a good thing. There's so much adversity to be faced in solo queue, and with that adversity, you can either face it and become a better player, or you can just five stack with your friends and unrated and beat up on a bunch of Timmies and make the pain go away. But anyways, these are only just a few things that can be said about solo queue. If there's anything that I missed that you want me to cover, as well as any additional topics that I should cover, let me know in the comments below. And if you want me to continue making videos like this, please leave a like and subscribe. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.